I think in a mature discussion of the effects of the referendum and the prospects uh, for this economy during a period of transition, which is what this economy is under, during a period of transition, we should recognize um, how the forces of adjustment are affecting the economy. Yes, it is good news that business investment is up, um, rounded to 2% once with the most recent figures is, is where it ends up. But business investment is not up any way to the degree that a world economy growing at over 4% with the easiest financial conditions, most supportive financial conditions uh, in over a decade, with the strongest balance sheets in probably 25 years, and with huge opportunities in an environment of greater certainty, it's not growing to that extent, the extent to which it would. We estimate it's four percentage points below what it otherwise would be. Now, that's not us just sitting there uh, estimating. That's based on discussions with 2,000 businesses up and down the country. It's based on the, uh, the other survey evidence. And it's based just, I mean, I'm sure you have these conversations as well. I think we all recognize that we, this year particularly, there's a period where there is some head, there are some headwinds to this economy um, that we all want to see cleared um, and cleared with um, uh, a clear direct, uh, you know, a clear direction. Now, again, to put it in context, in May of 2016, if we're going to go back to our forecast, let's go back to May of 2016, which is a forecast that was conditioned on a different outcome uh, for the referendum, and that forecast relative to where the economy is today, the economy is about one percentage point below where we thought the economy would be today, given a different outcome and given the strength of the global economy. Now, if you roll forward the IMF forecast, and we won't exactly agree with the IMF forecast, I think it's a little light for the UK economy for 2018, but if you roll that forward for 2018, it's two percentage points below that May forecast. So if we're going to play counterfactual. I think we should look at both counterfactuals. Um, and what is most productive is to understand how the process of leaving the European Union is affecting businesses and households and our export markets. Um, the good news is on the export side, we're being our exporters have been able to take pretty full advantage of the opportunities. They had spare capacity. Uh, they're more competitive because of the exchange rate they're getting on with it. It's understandable that our businesses, on the whole, on average on the whole, not all businesses, but on average on the whole, are waiting to see what the future arrangements are going to be with the EU and where the bigger opportunities are going to be outside. That's understandable. It weighs on it for a period of time, and we conduct policy accordingly.